people of Earth, welcome to the Pride Month edition of Sad Poets Doorstep Club. I am your humble overlord for the evening. I'm Crow. I'm going to be leading you through the, thir the first half of this joint event with Whiskey and Beards Publishing. Connor himself is going to be leading the second half. We've got some amazing queer poets for you tonight. It's going to be amazing. And almost all of them are new. We've got one person returning from an earlier episode and almost entirely fresh faces. So it's going to be fantastic. Um, I'm going to give you a general content warning now. There's probably going to be mature themes throughout the night. You know, uh, sensitive subjects. Uh, if you are sensitive to that kind of subject, uh, please use your own judgment and mute when you feel you might need to. Uh, performers will be giving their own content warnings throughout the night and giving you a wave when it's safe to come back in. So when you see someone waving, feel free to unmute and come back. All right, with that out of the way, I'm going to start us off with a poem. It's a really angry poem. I'm following in the steps of our first headliner, and I'm going to be angry because I am angry. Uh, content warnings for discussion around transphobia. Uh, this is called How to Be Socially Acceptable as a Trans Person in the 21st Century. Try not to be too out there. It's important to be softly spoken. Trim your claws. Shape yourself around their ideals, their comfort. Beat yourself down till the threat they see has been pacified. Trim your claws. It's important to make normal people feel safe around you. Because in order to be accepted, you're going to have to reintegrate. Effectively muzzled, trim your claws, strips down to your bones. Try not to consciously work to erase the divide. Throw other trans people under the bus if they work to erase the divide. Denounce every cis ally who works to erase the divide. Try to stop thinking about the murders and harassment that frame the divide. Cry yourself to sleep trying to forget about the murders and harassment that frame the divide. Because up until now, your every waking thought has been about trying to erase the divide and preventing the murders of countless trans people that make up the divide. But it isn't countless because every trans person reads the kill count that makes up the divide. And we mourn the hundreds lost every year in service to maintaining the divide. Also, cis people can smugly call that equality. Pointing at the box you climbed into for them. Preening like a performing animal while the rest of us pace in our cages. Teeth bared, claws sharpened to turf ripping points. Because this has never been about acceptance. We don't care if we tick your boxes. We will flatten your boxes as we live harder than anyone else. And we have earned this through fire and brimstone and hailstone fists, the hoops we're forced to jump through simply to show why we should be allowed to exist. Thank you, I am Crow. Welcome to Sad Poet Star Step Club. Be proud. Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> Thanks everyone. All right, so starting off this half, she is a pansexual poet living with chronic illness. She runs events for Scarth in Books and is a facilitator with Derbyshire Writing School. Her collection Metamorphosis was published this May with Verve Poetry Press. Please give it up for Charlotte Lunn. Yay! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! So beautiful. Woo -hoo! Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to see you all perform. Oh. Um, so I'm going to be reading you some poems from my um, collection that Crow mentioned, which is called Metamorphosis, which came out this May. And my first one is called Who Are You Today? In front of this mirror, I am faceless. Different masks hang on the wall. I must choose one to wear for the rest of the day. A piece of scalp and jawbone are missing from one face. Another, its mouth cleaves to the side, an expression unable to bear much at all. I choose the last face, the one that is perfect, the one that has not yet been harmed, the one that is not really mine. Now there isn't anything graphic in my set, but I will give a content warning for this next poem as it mentions anorexia. So I'll let you mute if you need to. Okay, so this is called Afternoon Tea. 
too refined for conversations like I'm not eating lately, for anorexia to be synonymous with anxiety. You don't notice the things we don't talk about yet you're screaming in the street. Are you making yourself sick? I mean, honestly, who wants to make themselves sick? Loss of appetite does not confirm your diagnosis. Symptoms of anxiety, loss of appetite, overeating, bloating, IBS, stomach ulcers. Raising children not to feel is the reason we're here in your car. I tell you that I'm depressed and you say, well, I already knew that. And you can come back after that poem. Next one is called Call of Desperation. A thrumming heart beneath a silk feathered cage, a microcosm valley in its unhinged bill. It faintly hums, speaking in tongues, crooning cacophonous in distant fields, swooping over hedges, fanned silk sweeping, tucking, it dips, fragile, a feathered scarf falls. So this next one is for anybody who's ever been cheated on, anybody who's ever struggled with their mental health, and anybody who has ever suffered from mental health services not doing what they should. It was a concise winter, sharp, accurate, white, like the cook called doctor that swept you away, covered in everything you tried so hard to hold on to. A numbing of the new pill they just gave you, of you can't move until you've finished feeling, till you've topped up your pot. These leaves leave you with nothing but bitterness, distrust and loathing of her curves, hiding within your arms as I was sleeping. I wish I could be angry, because being angry is easier. And I wish you could be angry, because every time you talk to me, I get closer to replying because I was too much and not enough and she told me I didn't need her anymore. After way too many, how do you feel on a scale of one to 10? You're only allowed to have one problem at a time until you laugh, until you cry all at once. So this one's about ending a friendship but being really sad about it. It's called Sarah. This is not a stay for tea. Though you want it so badly to be, this is not the time to offer just because she brought you milk. An expectation of kettle simmers as she moves a little past the door. You stare at everything you know so well and not at all anymore. She goes to get her bus. A bag full of reminders lay strewn on the floor. Oh, so I've had some absolutely awful experiences with doctors and the more I seem to talk about it with other people, the more I find out that a lot of people actually go through really negative experiences with doctors, with therapists, and it just makes me really angry. I feel like people should get the respect and dignity that they deserve. Um, so this is called what I should have said. To the doctor is, try having a panic attack for two weeks instead of sticking a stethoscope down my shirt without my permission, then tell me I don't feel. Thank God for the pills. I don't know how else we'd all keep up with this world. I get where you're coming from. I wouldn't go back to thinking I may die, tripping over my own feet, numb behind the eyes. Sometimes we just need a helping hand along the way. We weren't meant to do this alone. We need people who don't say, I already knew that. You just got passionate about something, so you can't be depressed. People have it so much worse than you. You're too young to be stressed. We can be happy and sad and lonely and in love and tired and excited, just like everyone else. just got a few more for you. So this one's called Girl, as I was dedicating it to myself. Um, but this evening, I'm going to dedicate it to you lovely people in the LGBT community. Your dreams are in your stockings, instead of in your hands, 
Maybe that is why today you couldn't really stand the thought of getting glitter out your sequin pants. Once it's there, it's everywhere, it's likely to expand, to get around much like your heart, but you just need a plan to borrow stars straight from the sky and put them in your eyes. Remember that you sparkle to get you through the night. And I just have one more for you. So thank you for being such a beautiful audience. And I can't wait to hear the rest of the performances. And thank you again for having me. So this is called Carousel. Time moves forward, heedless to hiatus, feeding us to the years we are not yet ready for. These bodies whinny for overfilled plates, pivot in tandem, lock fingers, suffocate. Tapping on and off to the splutter of bridge meets river, archways we will not endure, bring us to places where our eyes are taken from us. On the route with the delicate flowers, whose name I forgot. Lost signal grants us a siesta on the stairs. Thank you. Give it up for Charlotte Lallan! <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Uh, that was the first of our many, many SPDC debuts tonight. We've got so many, and here's another one. The next person is a lesbian poet from Nottingham. She mainly writes about LGBTQ plus issues and trauma, focusing primarily on the lesbian experience. Their first chat book, The Light Within, was self-published in December 2018. Please give it up to Lucy Pettigrew! Woo, woo, woo! Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for having me tonight. I'm so excited to get to perform at this event. Um, I'm really just looking forward to hearing everyone else's poems. Charlotte's your inquiries, yours are both amazing. Um, I am going to read... The first three poems are all about different gay awakenings I had, because... I didn't have just one, I had multiple over my entire life and I still get them now and I'm like, oh yeah, you're gay, I remember now. Um, so this one is about Delphine from Orphan Black, um, who is a beautiful woman and we love her. Okay, this is called Delphine. It was April and everything had fallen away from me until I saw you. Queer girl not knowing she was queer, but I knew because I felt the exact same as she. Trembling lips and silver tongues and stuttered French, trying, trying to convey truth, but falling short. I know you. I am you. I've been you. I'm here. Queerness pours from your mouth like rivers of everything I've ever known about myself. We feel nothing towards them, and yet we are still trying to convince ourselves we do. We want soft hands and one-sided dimples. Crevices we didn't know we needed, like air. Sustenance in first-time giddiness. It feels wrong, but it's the opposite. It's us, it's us, it's us. No one comes close. Closeted 16 year, 16 year old will come into herself in time. This is just the beginning. Um, this next one is about another gay awakening I had. Um, if anyone's watched the L word, you will understand this. This is about a character from that who I adore. <laughs> this is uh, spoilers for the L word in case you haven't seen it and you don't want to like know what happens because this is a pretty big spoiler. So this is called Dana Fairbanks. Precious closeted lesbian will smile until I realize I'm gay. Mouth curled up at the edges like she knew before I did. Dimples stretching until the word lesbian falls out over panic messages. I wear dyke like shame until she kisses Alice because then I understood and the narrative made sense. We need more queer joy, queer joy in TV because after all that, after making me realize they still killed her off. Bury your awakening, but don't forget her. I can't believe they killed her in the fear banks. Okay. Next one is my last one about my gay awakenings because I don't feel like more than three is too many. Um, this one is about a character from Holby City, which I was obsessed with when I was like 13. So this one's called Jack Naylor. <laughs> the truth is that I don't know who was my gay awakening. I woke up slowly, one by one, crushing on women I would never know. Strawberry blonde, hard faced authority figure, come kiss me. I want to know what it feels like to know you. I was 14 when I met you and I found myself in your fingertips. It's like something cracked open and I knew. 
I was bisexual until the closet became too claustrophobic. I stuck the flags to my wall and breathed with clear lungs. Dust settles too much when you're in denial. And I have you to remember. I haven't seen you in a long time and now the show is being cancelled, I probably never will again. But just know you helped. Your hard ass energy made me realise I came into truth because of you. Thanks, Jack. So the next one, um, I've got a couple more. The next one is about wanting someone that you're not sure wants you and you're like, should I make a move, should I not? So this one is called, she sings about your freckles. We leave the sea behind, the train rolls away into the night. I can feel something between us and I know you feel it too. My, ha my hands want to reach out and feel your warmth, but what if I'm reading this wrong? I try to focus on your eyes while you speak instead of your mouth. All I can think about is kissing you. Crowds of people will never see again guide us home. We stop at the same corner every day in part ways, but what if tonight was different? I'd finally reach out and grab your hands, feel your warmth, press my lips to yours and smile. We'd wake up a mess in each other's bodies, knowing we felt the same. But you say, this is me. We smile and part into the unforgiving winter chill. One day I'll be brave enough. Okay, this one is a lot angrier about someone who, when I told them I was a lesbian, was not happy. Um, <laughs> so this is, a, this has uh, slurs in it. So if you're not comfortable with that, then please mute because yeah, it could be, could be damaging for some people. Okay, this is called Long Gone. You look at me with green eyes. I tremble under your gaze, but I won't look. Scared you'll get in my head. Dyke, you spit. Like my love is too much of what you don't want, and yet you want it. You want it so much, but you won't get it. So you do anything you can to get over me. But guess what? You're the joke and Dyke's the punchline. I found myself in the syllables, spat out at my feet like they belong there. Baby, one day you'll meet a girl and so will I, and we'll both be happy. Baby, one day I'll look back on this and laugh so loudly people in the street will wonder what's going on. You're not ready for the rest of it, so I won't tease the slurs out of your mouth, even though I know they're there. When you get home, I'll be long gone, a trail of smoke in the fog, clearing. I've already deleted your number. You mean nothing to me. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I've got two more for you. So this one is about... Someone who I was in a relationship with, um, and this is about getting over them and trying not to be sad, even though you're very sad about it. It's called 1-800-CALL-ME-BACK. I do miss you. Your smile lit up by me. Your, ho you, your hotel room with a north facing window. I should have known you weren't for me. That song still takes me somewhere, reflecting off the glass, like Taylor Swift said, mirrorball. I finish watching The L Word. I want to ask you what you think about what happened to Jenny. I hated her, but didn't want her to die. It feels important to acknowledge that through all the hurt. I'm trying not to make a fool of myself. I'm trying not to want you, but I do, and it feels like glass against my skin. My room doesn't feel like mine, and I've been stuck in here for a week, and I know you'd help me feel better, but you're not here, and I am. I just miss you, okay? Call me when you get this. Okay, last one, which is a short one. Um, this is called Voice Notes about someone that I would very happily date if they weren't halfway across the world. Because <laughs> in true lesbian fashion, we always fall for people we, that live elsewhere that we can't have. So this is called Voice Notes, it's my last one. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience. Bitch, I really think I could fall in love with you. Don't you see that from the way I called you bitch? It's a term of endearment. A literal ocean separates us, but I can't stop dreaming about taking you on a date. Let's hold hands and scrunch noses and be the most wholesome lesbians we know. This isn't about sex. It's about connection, feeling, love. Send me a voice note. I want to, I want to hear you speaking to me. Thank you so much. It's been a great, I've loved performing. Uh, thank you for your support and for having me. Thank you. Round of applause for Lucy, everybody! Woo! Woo!
Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for bringing that to us tonight. That was, oh, as someone said, I think it was PM, you are perfection, Lucy. That was fantastic. <sighs> Moving on. Next up is a poet, musician, and activist who likes to write about sexuality, disability, relationships, and politics. Sometimes all within the same poem. This is Camille Broad. Hello, hi everyone. Thanks so much for having me here. It's brilliant. Um, I have a few poems to do, so I'll crack on. Uh, this first poem, uh, just a content warning for some internalized fat phobia, um, if that's not anyone's bag. Um, and I'll wave when I'm done with this poem. Um, and it is called Daylight Moon. And I wrote it as I was coming out of lockdown and starting to socialize in person again. So Daylight Moon. Impatient Daylight Moon. You've come out too soon. You're blushing fat and pale pinkish against a bright skyline that wasn't designed for you. You stick out, a bloodless thumb in the sweet summer heat, and you look a damn fool, with your pale round face aiming for sleek, suave gloom, but achieving, achieving frumpy and glum. I prefer late night moon, chips at 3 a.m. moon, there's room for the night to go on forever moon. When I've had a few and can stand the sight of you, moon. I sicken to see you now, mocking my own looming face, reminding me of the city nights and fat queer confidence I miss when I'm surrounded by this beauty neither of us can fully partake in. A pox upon thee, you pockmark upon the face of the smooth pastel sky. You are sickened from wondering why you possess neither the grace nor determination of a shooting star. But at least now you can look to the sun, basking roundly and brightly and not giving a fuck about who she burns. Uh, my next one, I do have a few content warnings, actually. <laughs> um, uh, this one I wrote quite recently, and just a quick warning for some violent imagery and a little bit of body horror, um, if that's not your thing. Um, so this poem is called Shame Cuts In. Shame cuts in at the start of the slow dance scene. It takes your date's hand, wells her across the sticky gym floor, and sneers in its letter jacket at your too plump, too queer face. Kisses her square on the neck and bears its prehensile teeth. Shame erupts from the ground in this unassuming town and burrows from scene to scene. It breaches construction sites, parks at night, ruins playgrounds and graveyards and parking lots as it seeps and seeps into the corners of your consciousness. Shame sucks onto your face and snakes down your gullet, incubates in your misery and bursts from your chest. It grows from your shoulder, a bulbous second head, directs your words and actions, manipulates your mouth and fists into acts of violence. Shame travels across deserts, ancient tombs, haunted castles, and abandoned strip malls, always on your location and always on the move. When it finds you, it consumes, makes you a monstrous hybrid with two backs and four arms, straining belly and gaping mouth that snarls with rancid breath. So that's that one. And this one, um, it's very mild, but um, a, a content warning for child birth and a bit of family rejection stuff. Um, it's all about me and a jumper, so, and it's called Labours of Love. I'm wearing a jumper you made five years before you made me. I can picture the needles clacking as you knitted my sinews and flesh, watched me slowly develop and eventually cut the umbilical yarn, tired and relieved to be finished, adoring the way I adorned your arms. We've got a lot in common, I realize, as I try this jumper on. We were both made with love and effort and frustration and delight. A couple of dropped stitches and loose threads, but what handmade thing claims to be perfect? We both lived in a closet for many years and were nice for someone to wrap around themselves on a cold night. But as it turns out, I was a bit more of a complicated project, somewhat of a difficult fit. If you could start, would you unravel me and start again? That's that one. <laughs> Another content warning. <laughs> Maybe I'm going a little overboard, but just in case. Um, uh, well, this one, there is uh, talk of homophobia and some violence in there as well. Um, and it's about my experience um, as a bisexual woman. I'm also polyamorous. So that's kind of throwing that into the mix. There's a lot of um, misunderstanding and stigma around both of those things. So um, this uh, poem is called Bisexual Woman Not Looking for Straight and Spoken For. You said you were open, but as it turns out, that case was very much closed. I just didn't have all the clues. You were hiding red string in the curve of your lip and board pins in your fingertips. I get it. I'm ex an exciting prospect. Gender ambiguous, newly polyamorous, bisexuals who are apparently always up for it. And it was just a drunken kiss. But a kiss is still a kiss. 
whether it's from the mouth of a babe or some random guy you just met. Now there's a crime scene on your hands and it's time to clean up. You do it well. Words of regret and truth and absolving solvent for spilt blood. But there remain stains that run deeper and will take many hands to remove. The supposedly lesbian porn made overwhelmingly for men. The fictional sapphic women who keep dying for the plot again and again. The women-loving women who are apparently waiting for the right man to come along. The sexual violence queer women face even more than their straight counterparts. The women who are harassed for holding hands in the street or assaulted on public transport for being queer, for being themselves, for existing beyond laptop screens and having the audacity to take up space beyond that which men can control. We pay for it in blood, in nervous sweat, in bitter tears. This cleanup act is going to take years. So that's the end of that one. Um, this is quite a quick one. Um, oh, someone wrote by Polly represent. Yay. <laughs> um, so just a bit of a content warning again, a little bit of body horror and some mental illness stigma in this one as well. Um, and this poem is called woman scorned. I've turned bitterness into an art. Each morning I coat a canvas in the bile of your words, which I furtively consumed in the night to poison my own heart. I'll eat you for breakfast. If you're lucky enough, I'll smile with gritted teeth while tearing the flesh from your neck, jaw thoroughly unhinged. Call me crazy all you want. It's technically accurate, after all. I'm diagnosed a double threat, an emotional woman and a certified nut. In 20 years, I'll look back on you and laugh. That's that one. <laughs> and I thought I'd um, end with a bit more fun um, and like happy queer <laughs> poem because um, loads of queer emotions. Um, so no warnings for this one. And uh, it's called... What I want to do now I'm in lockdown, and I wrote it last year. Denial is a delicious fruit. I want to do a wear, sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> Denial is a delicious fruit. I want to wear a dapper suit and seduce the crap out of you. I want to dye my hair blue or pink or purple or green like I used to do. I want to put on the bold and colorful makeup that I left unpacked and usually leave unopened in a corner of my bedroom. Do you, you dye your soft curly hair a soft pearly pink and paint your nails white? All the things they think and say you can't do. I want to walk around the park looking gay as fuck and hold hands with you. When we leave this cocoon, let's be the queerest butterflies in the whole damn room. Thank you. <laughs> really lovely to perform. Um, if anyone's interested, you can follow me on Instagram at Cami underscore poetry. So C-A-M-I underscore poetry. Um, but I'll pop some details in the video chat as well. Woo! Very good. Everyone give it up for Camille. Oh, so good, so good, so good. Oh, that queer joy at the end. Oh, I love it. I'm here for it. Also, Polly represent. Yes. <laughs> oh, right, next up. They are a queer non-binary poet living in Edinburgh, Scotland. They are out through the haze of cat or child-induced sleep deprivation to try to make sense of gender, relationships, and ADHD. Please welcome Cy Brand! Hey everyone, thanks so much for having me. All right, this first one comes with a content warning for um, transphobia. It was written while thinking about what the hell is gender and how do I get one to stop following me around? And uh, it's called Oil Change. Got my gender fluid changed today. It was leaking out of my trouser leg, leaving a smear of cat hair, stardust, and chip crease behind me. The neighbors were starting to complain. The chick at the desk between clucks, uh huh, uh huh, our specials for today are Newt's eyes and the ability to deliver puns with a straight face, uh huh. A very large beard barges past me and demands to be served fear and mountain water in a lager can. Straightforward, I can respect that. And again, I'm face to wood with the desk. I pay for the hey, new size. Thinking... <laughs> Sorry, so what else came on up? <laughs> it's hard, don't worry about it. I pay for the new size before sitting down in the recliner and dry, dry, drumming my fingers on the mixing barrel. Don't touch that. The operator coming back from her break, putting down her adult human female bag and spitting. I'm handed a ticket on ledger headed paper with a long hexadecimal number at the bottom. Wait your turn like everyone else. Wait your turn like everyone else. Wait your turn like everyone else. After a few years in the chair, my number is up. The newt's eye is clearly rancid by this point, but I don't want a fuss placed in the mixing barrel. Standard item list. Water, check. Guar gum, check. Acceptance, fresh out of that level, throw in a few more eyes instead. 
E numbers for that fresh glow? No thanks, they give me dysphoria. Hit the button, squelch, crunch, sizzle, ping, needle the size of Belgium, slurp, flick, 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 mustn't forget to drain the old stuff, twist of kneecap, cat hair, stardust, screams, chip grease, guar gum, Belgium, screams, psh, clunk, thank you, see you next time, bye. Maybe I'll just switch to wearing skirts. All right, that's the end of that one, if you want to come back. This next one is just about how buses are nice and I like buses and I like to be on a bus and think about being on buses, um, which I have not done very much in the last while. So this is called On the Bus. When I get the number six bus, I like to sit right above the wheel. There's a little click whenever the axle completes its orbit and it comforts me. I like to get the number 100 bus, which goes to the airport but not get off of the airport. And when questioned, I reply that the smell of new luggage reminds me of when I used to travel with my parents and they'd give us money to spend at the arcades and our evening walks would be warm and full of people. But really, I like to look at the faces of my neighbors and try to guess who they're leaving behind. I try not to get the number 21 bus. It's cold and I feel alone. But when I'm on the bus, I like to watch the drivers wave to each other as they go past. Uh, I once saw a driver wave at one from a different company and I thought that was beautiful. And when the bus is late, I, I look at the driver with sweat dripping down their maroon striped tie, fear in their eyes. I look at them and I smile and I say, everything's gonna be okay. Okay, this next one is about the, the cosmic horror that is large companies um, because they are indescribable and yes, a lot. So this is called Corporate Love. Have you loved enough this quarter? Performance reviews are coming. Have you loved your intern skittering anxiously down regulation-sized hallways, trying not to stare through the tinted meeting room glass? Who knows what lies beyond? Have you signed Sherry's card? Have you loved the mail clerk? No, not the old one. She opened some letters and saw things, things she shouldn't have seen, things no one should see. No, the new one, the one who wouldn't meet your eye in the cafeteria, who vibrates slightly in his seat. Have you loved him? Performance reviews are coming. Have you loved me? Have you loved the cleaners? They did a great job with the stain in the basement, don't you think? Have you signed Sherry's card? Have you loved the cleaners? Have you loved Sherry? Have you loved me? Performance reviews are coming. Managers love reports. Reports love colleagues. Colleagues love managers. Triangles love triangles. Performance reviews are coming. Love triangles stacked. Love pyramid scheme. I at the top getting all the love. Give it to me. Performance reviews are coming. Give me all your love. Give me your soul. You're nothing without me. I keep you from the streets. I'm your god. Have you signed Sherry's card? Give me love. Vote Tory, you filth, you worm, you human resource. Love me. Performance reviews are coming. Love is real. I am real. I will bury you. Love me. Love me. What's that one? Don't actually vote Tory. That's that's a joke. Please don't do that. Um, never do that. All right. This uh, this is the last one. It's it's about Twitter, which is awful and wonderful and I spent all my time there even though it kills me, but um, it's called Blocklist. Someone well actually me on Twitter, so I blocked him. His cousin got in my mentions asking why I reached for the block button so quickly. <laughs> well, you ain't seen nothing yet, Brad blocked. I complain about reply guys and five show up instantly, keyboards and sweaty fists, block, 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 and I have a taste for it now. The blood of internet assholes is on my tongue. Who wants some next? I furiously tweet, Nazis are bad, actually, a dozen Nazis. Not everyone you disagree with is a Nazi. Machine gun block, 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 everyone they follow, block, 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 block. My mouth is frothing, my fingers burning, keycaps and mouse melting under my unrelenting block spree. Come the fuck at me, I'll block all of you, I scream, as I block everyone who has disparagingly used the phrase social justice warrior. I block my family for giving me corporeal form that needs looked after. I block my employer for only adding me in tweets about diversity. I block Wint. I block God. I block 
fucking god and you can't stop me if you try i'll block you so hard your ancestors will rise from the grave make twitter accounts they'll be blocked before they can even choose a racist philosopher for a profile picture i block everyone who i've ever had a crush on which was most of the accounts i follow especially ones who post pictures of them with their cats that's adorable please keep doing that I block Poetry Magazine for rejecting my 1,000 stanza epic, Johnny Bravo Gets Punched in the Dick. I blocked the Poetry Foundation for publishing Poetry Magazine, which famously rejected my 1,000 stanza epic, Johnny Bravo Gets Punched in the Dick. I block Poetry, all of it. If you're in this room, if you're watching this, if you've ever read a poem, you've ever written a poem, you are blocked. I block the cafe where I write my poems. They ban me for life, come back to my house, break my espresso machine, and leave behind a one-star Amazon review of my now self-published 1000 stanza epic, Johnny Bravo gets punched in the dick. But I just don't care. I tweet a picture of me at my desk, eyes wild, fire and smoke, engulfing the room, demon laughter issuing from my now inhuman form, and it gets zero likes. Everyone's gone. I'm alone. Finally, that's me. Thanks so much. Everybody, please give it Woo! up. Oh my God. Oh, that was, that was incredible. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Oh, good. So okay. happy that you've not blocked me yet. So I can <laughs> this. And I need to read Johnny Bravo like, Gets Punched wow. in the Dick. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all need to read Johnny Bravo Gets Punched in the Dick. That's an epic that I would sit down for. Oh, thank you so much, Sai. That was absolutely exceptional. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's going to reset now. Reset the momentum. Okay, next up. They are a writer across genres. In 2020, she won the Queer King's Prize for her prose poem, The Persistence of Memory, but is currently a book blogger and a freelance writer as well. If she's not doing that, you'll find her with a cup of green tea, crying over all the anime, book, and video game characters she be she's become far too invested in. Please give it up for P.M. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much, bro. And also... So I'm so scared to ask for your Twitter handle after this. Um, we'll find out what happens later. Um, and everyone else has been so amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for inviting me here. This has been such a lovely space. I actually haven't performed in a couple months. So it's been really nice to reintroduce myself this way. Um, and as Pro said, I am PM. That's my stage name. And sometimes I like to compare myself to an old man. Note how I did not say old woman. The old women have a special quality to them, which old men do not. You can see it if you brush away the dust. Buried inside them is a treasure chest where pearls of wisdom remain. But much like a cranky old man who has known too much of the world to carry any more of it with him, I buried my treasure chest long ago. But when I see my breath crystallize before my eyes on those cold winter walks, I carry those crystals in my palm and think, I may have some pearls left after all. Thank you. So that was my first poem. Um, the second poem that I'm gonna do um, was actually a challenge poem um that I got asked to do and what I like to get people to do is guess the three random words that were given to me as prompts that I had to stitch together to make um this poem so if you're watching on Facebook you can put it in the comments but you guys here on the zoom please feel free to put it in the chat I'm very interested to hear what people think the words are that I was given so this poem is called white bread when I was a child, and to be honest, even now, getting letters was so exciting and I cannot explain why, but I'll try. The doorbell ringing was a reminder that somewhere in Britain, or maybe the world, someone had felt my correspondence so important, so necessary, that nay, they did not text me. They did not ring me. They wrote my name on that envelope. 
each curve of the P, the flamboyant flick of the Y was carved atop this envelope with the thought that I could speak for myself, parents removed. My tiny hands would clamp down on the envelope, too, ner too nervous to open the secrets it might contain in my living room, so I would run upstairs and ever so slowly peel apart the top triangle from the bottom rectangle, like pulling two pieces of delicate white bread apart. But then I paused. I thought, if they really wanted to speak to me, why make it so slow? Why not call me or text me? I imagined the postman a panda, lazily grazing on bamboo, chewing every section of the stalk, opening and closing, opening and closing, pushing the stick into their mouth like an envelope, opening and closing, opening and closing, waiting to be stuffed and sent to me. Finally, its black eyes heavy with sleep would fall to my letter. Pause and then tuck themselves back into rest. Despite my anger at this uh, snail-like system, I would open my letter with my tiny hands to find it read, <clears throat> Dear Miss PM, the Royal Bank of Scotland would like to deduct 10 pounds from your account. Thank you for your continued patience during this recession. Sincerely, the Royal Bank of Scotland maintenance team. And so I ran back downstairs and yelled, Dad, the white people are taking money from us again. Passing him the envelope and watched as the white bread crumbled in his hands. Thank you. So that was my second poem. Um, and now I am going to do a poem that um, fits the occasion a bit more. Um, I am also bisexual, um, no clue what the words were. So I'll actually tell you what the words were before I continue. So it was panda, bread, and the post office. So I was like, how, how am I gonna write this? And then this poem just came out of it. So I highly recommend that as a writing exercise if you're ever stuck, just get people to pick like three random words and try and write. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I, I didn't expect you to guess it. <laughs> but yeah, so this uh, story, oh, sorry, this poem is called First Kiss Story. Pretty self-explanatory from the title. And it goes like this. Here, in this local park, with the unforgettable stench of weed and under boob sweat is where you will almost have your first kiss. Twice, well, thrice, with two different boys and one girl. With the body count and private location though, you are unsure if this is more murder mystery than romantic first kiss story. Although, Something did die there. Three times you returned home with dry lips and wet eyes. Your face did not belong to you anymore. It is, it was an abandoned haunted house. Each empty room places they could have kissed. A warm hand against a cold cheek. Fingers sweeping across to brush the hair from your eyes like curtains drawn back to reveal the morning light, except there was no sunrise. Your hair still stank of weed. You will have your first kiss five years later. Those boys, that girl, will be ghosts crawling across your cheeks, living somewhere inside you. When this boy leans in. You will feel them clawing up the corridor of your throat and you will vomit them out in apologies. Sorry, I'm really nervous. I've never done this before. I don't know what to do. And clink. Your teeth cheers together and shaky, nervous bodies erupt into laughter, into daylight. And he goes in again. Congratulations, your lips have finally been doused with someone else's saliva. And you realize in that moment, that was all you needed to wash 
those ghosts away. Thank you. Um, and I think, as far as I'm aware for timing, I won't be that person you asked, but I think I have time for one more. Um, so this is also another poem about uh, my queerness, but also about the intersectionality of it, because in case you couldn't tell, um, I don't know, my webcam might be rubbish at displaying cameras, but I'm not white. Um, so uh, this poem um, goes like this. Secret agent, my official title, when I was not yet grown. I'm tempted here to make a dig at myself. If you, see, if you saw me standing up, you'd probably say you've still not grown. But my missions put me in incredibly dangerous positions. Behind my mother, trying to stick post-it notes on her shirt without her, without her noticing. In front of the snack cupboard, trying to stick my hand inside the cookie jar without people noticing that they magically disappeared. At the side of my grandmother, trying to stick out my tongue without her pushing it back in and correcting my behavior. But she too had the same title. Her disapproving tongue clicks told me so. Each time I brought home a new version of myself. But it was my job to protect my identity, I explained to no one in particular. Fingerprints on the body of another girl must be burnt and after incense to overlap that scent of scalded skin. If you smelt me, you'd probably say that I smell like every other Indian girl. But they say that you can spot queers with gaydar or binoculars, but they don't believe that I've never used that tool. I've never known how, but they also don't believe many things that I tell them, like my mother, who never believed those post-it notes were behind her, sticky, hanging loose that whole year. And that's it from me. Thank you very much for having me. Um, and also I will plug, <laughs> I will also plug my Insta. Um, I am at poet pri underscore m poet pre underscore m thank you so much for listening you guys have been a lovely audience thank you please another excellent excellent debut absolutely floored me that was beautiful oh i'm just being pummeled by so many good poems poems i don't know why i said that weirdly oh Amazing. Okay, it's time for our first headliner. Our first headliner has performed poems while stripping, handcuffing herself to a microphone stand and having dry rice thrown at her in an attempt to understand the true meaning of love, though not as yet all at the same time. She is the author of A Lady of a Certain Rage, Names and Songs of Women, Incidents of Trespass, and most recently, England is the Enemy. In her spare time, she worries. This is the absolute powerhouse of the Newcastle poetry scene. Give it up for the stylings of A.J. McKenna! <laughs> Hi. Right, so, um... Content warnings. Uh, I tend to do really shouty, angry, anti-trans poems, not anti-trans poems, anti-transphobia poems, um, in which I imagine myself shouting back at trans folks. So uh, can everyone hear me okay, by the way? Give a little, yeah, cool, awesome. Right, uh, yeah, I'm trying having the computer up here so I can stand up while I perform this time. The first two poems in this set specifically uh, involve descriptions of specific incidents of transphobic violence. So when I finish those first two poems, I'll do like a little wave to let you know that uh, those are over. You can come back in. Then again, the third poem is, is not like as specific, but there is a lot of stuff about shit that's happened to me in it. Um, the third poem is, the fourth poem is probably all right. That's about toilets, but um, that might be an area for you. So I don't know. Um, you know, if you want to, you know, mute the entire stream for like this 
this section, that's cool. We're all here to have a good time. But uh, anyway, uh, starting first poem now, which is Melissa's roommate hit her. But the scissor arresting officer thought she was the aggressor because Melissa, she was trans. And then the women in the shelter got Melissa in the shower and assaulted and ejected her because they knew she was trans. And if you're listening and thinking that my record must be skipping because I'm still listing injustices to people who are trans, then think how I feel. My reality is the conditionality of my right to exist. Well, you insist you've heard this script before and barely stifle yawns because I'm spoiling your enjoyment as you practice fact avoidance. But the poisonous thing is there are Melissa's in this city as we speak. And the aggressors, the arresting officers think victims while they too are in this city. And you know that this is true because the kids who bullied you, yeah, they, were Sith. The kids who hit you in the playground, brick by brick, tore your esteem down till you wished that you could leave town, scream the shitting, pissing scheme down. They were Sith. So, if this seems a bit repetitive, it might be worth reflecting on just exactly where the problem is. Where is the problem? Where is the problem? Well, I'll tell you where the problem is. The problem is politicians who give lip service to pride and then kick the gender reform act consultation into the long grass. The problem is a media that has published at least 276 anti-trans articles this year, at least one every day for the whole of Pride Month, but sees fit not to pay any attention to the fact that the UK currently has no uh, surgeons capable and available for doing phalloplasty for trans men, and pays no attention to the thousands of people who turned up to London on Saturday for trans pride, honourable exception there for the independent. That's the problem. And for a long time, I thought I'd try and ignore that. I thought that maybe going on about that problem might make me a little unpopular with certain elements of the poetry scene. So I tried to write other stuff. I tried to write confessional stuff. I tried to write state of the nation stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, we're still living on Turf Island, so I thought, fuck it, I'm just going to go back to my wheelhouse, I'm just going to go back to doing these angry, shouty, ranty, anti trans poems, because someone has to do one. This is a poem I wrote back in 2013, it's called Letter to a Minnesota Prison. Your check bounced, CC. That was held against you. They said it showed the content of your character. They never said a word about the swastika tattooed on the body of the man they say you murdered. Or the fact he yelled, go back to Africa, though you were as American as he was. They talked about your check, and not the one King tried to cash in Washington. The one dated 7476 that said, all men are created equal. In school, they say for men, read people, but we know that isn't true. For men, read white. For men, read male assigned at birth and happy to be so. For men, read Thomas Jefferson, fathering children on his slaves. For men, read Hoover, closeted, obsessed with sin and plague. For men, read Ronald Reagan. For men, read James Earl Ray. For men, read us in killer's eyes, the eyes of those who beat Crane Conaway to death, 
who shot Dione Jones, who gagged Rosita Hidalgo, stabbed her body, slit her throat, who shot Coco Williams, who shot Terrell Jackson, who shot Paige Clay in the face, who shot Brandy Martell, who burned Lorena Escalera's house down, choking her with smoke, who shot Tracy Johnson again and again, who stabbed Tiffany Gooden again and again, who shot Deja Jones, who shot Kendall Hampton, who put a gun to Kyra Cordell, Dover's head and pulled the trigger. American eyes looked down those barrels. American lives flashed by in the light of those blades. These are only the murders in 2012. These are just the American names. And they are black names and Latino names, the kind that whites turn down when they are written on CVs, that we insist will need ID when passing checks, which if they bounce prove criminality. The willingness cold-bloodedly to kill a man. White names can get away with murder. Look at Zimmerman. They say he was frightened. Well, what about you? They say he was threatened. Weren't you threatened too? He carried a gun and you only had scissors, but they read him as white and he wasn't transitioning and so occupied a much safer position in the hierarchy they say isn't there. White, straight and cis beats black, trans and queer. They said all men created equal. They told us from men read people, but we were red wrong when we came into the world. Black or white name, some nurse, some doctor, branded boy on us. To be named is to be destroyed, to be entered in the register of births, to be erased. We spend our lives like Virginia, dragging around our colonial names. The names in the murder reports, the obituaries, that day in the car when I could barely breathe, I gasped to my ex as she drove me to hospital, make sure they use the right words at my funeral. Did you think that, Cece? When you were attacked, when the truth of who we are conflicts with their facts, their records, their papers, their burden of proof falls on us, and we can't testify when we're dead. It's a double bind. Die and your corpse gets misgendered, fight back and be sentenced for having defended your life. We aren't the ones stand your ground laws intend to protect. They expect us to dutifully beat a retreat from abuse. Blessed, they say, are the meek. But how many times, CC, did you turn the other cheek? How many times can we just walk away, avoid causing trouble, keep playing it safe? till we finally decide that we just cannot take it. You didn't attack, you talked back, remonstrated. And in taking that act, CC, you demonstrated what they hate most of all, calm and reasoned defiance, satyagraha, soul force. They met it with violence, as they did in Birmingham, Selma and Memphis, it's true you fought back, then you offered resistance, but comfy white cis folks who style themselves pacifists have no clue what the stakes are. The gunshots which kill us are silenced. You fought, who wouldn't, in fear of their life? And you won. That's why they hate you, CC. You survived. <sighs> that poem uh, is about C.C. McDonald. Um, I want to dedicate it to uh, Neela Gupta, who died recently. Um, the world is less of a place without the minute. But as much as, you know, we do survive in spite of everything this world throws at us and people in the media and politics and the Christian right and all the rather so-called Christian right, I guess I should say, throw at us. And this is a poem about that. I'm just gonna have a quick stop and just uh, get my breath back. The pause that refreshes. Okay, so this is called Unstoppable. Don't call me unstoppable.
because of what poisoned my veins. Don't call me unstoppable because you maintain that I have a male frame. Don't call me unstoppable because chicks like us all have big hands. Don't call me unstoppable because I used to be a man. Because the truth is, you've never seen deceleration until you've seen a trans girl breaking, asking why she's been forsaken through a faith of running makeup, re defeated and retreating from the space we're told we take up, anticipating beatings from the moment that we wake up, reeling from repeated sneaky cotton ceiling breakups, wise up, size up, who statistics really favor. Where more Miss Elizabeth? than Big Van Vader. You get away with hitting us by claiming we're a danger, say our inexistence should be morally mandated, leaving me inquisitive as to why we're highly gate kept, who crept through the hospital doors, sneaking past the smokers outside, bypassing the wards, who got to board level and kissed some corporate ass until they got to set the obstacles that we all had to pass. Do you think I'm paranoid? Then call me Shirley Manson, because I've fought with the dysmorphia that tells me I'm not handsome and have coped with self-congratulators who think I should thank them for using the right pronouns when they message me one-handed, and this, and that, and a hundred other things. I've been knocked flat a dozen times by suffering, called bitch, called bat, always called that other thing, everybody and their cat thinks I could use some humbling. Is there any wonder that I sometimes feel I'm stumbling, and I will stumble, and I will fall, and I will get up anyway, and be unstoppable, and it's not because I'm stronger, and it's not because I'm hard, and it's not because blunt trauma hurts less when your tissue's scarred, and it's not because I'm a mutant, some majestic weirdo freak. It's not even because I have a flawless rhyme technique, no. If I can seem unstoppable, and this is a line directed directly at the people I mentioned earlier, if I can seem unstoppable, it's because of the things I've been through. If you call me unstoppable, it's cause what tried to stop me was you. <sighs> okay. I, uh, I'm gonna do one more. This is a sequel to a poem that I wrote back in 2013. Uh, I actually recorded the video for that poem in the toilets of the Royal Vauxhall Tavern on the same night that a notorious transphobe, I beg your pardon, got kicked out of the place, in her words, for being a lesbian. The thing that kind of interferes with that is that while she was saying this, uh, on the footage of the event, there was a great big poster of Amy Lame on the wall above her. But, you know, and uh, that poem was about bathrooms. And I always wanted to write another one, because obviously I wrote that poem when I was the start of my transition. Uh, I'm a lot further along now, not finished yet, thanks to the frankly ridiculous gatekeeping of the medical establishment, but uh, this is another bathroom thing. I used to piss in the gents. I don't mean pre-transition. I mean when the queue at the British Museum snaked up the steps of the gift shop I put on my best style out face and strutted into the man's room as if I was daring somebody to tell me to leave. Somebody told me to leave. Years later, in Waverley Station, a cleaner I'd already pissed, but he stopped me washing my hands, which does not seem hygienic. I was matter out of place, I guess. Already too dirty. Something to be shoe. A lot of us do it, both trans and cis, when the queue is too long and our bladder too small and we think we can chance it. 
We all walk into the bog with the man on the door because signs are not magic. And we are not vampires Peter Cushing can see off with juxtaposed candlesticks. And that cleaner, he had passage to both sets of toilets. Perhaps that was what he resented, my usurpation of his lavatorial warrant, which suggests that a man bent on mayhem, which is what you say I am, could more easily throw on a tabard than secure a prescription for hormones. But you expect these signs to bind us. You expect me to keep out of the toilets I've queued for since I got the bum's rush at Waverley Station. You want the right to call me matter out of place. Well, I refuse. I will claim my right to use these cubicles however long I have to queue and however much my bits ache. And before I piss in the gents again, I will piss on your doorstep. I'll fucking squat down to do it too. Thank you, you've been brilliant. Absolutely fucking amazing first half, wonderful, great stuff. I'm gonna sit down now. <laughs> um, Thank you. You've been brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Woohoo! Oh, give it up for the powerhouse of the Newcastle scene. The absolute pinnacle. Uh, I say this with no sarcasm uh, at all. And most of it's by one person who I know is not going to like this. Pinnacle! Uh, hey, uh, one third of the UK Trans and Non-Binary Poets Network admin. Oh, yeah. Anyone watching who is trans or non-binary and a performer, join our network. It's great. Yes, we're, we're really on Facebook. On Facebook. Um, we're going to take a 10 minute break now. Uh, do what you need to do. Uh, Facebook audience people, in the comments, there are fundraising links to a couple of transition funds for trans people. There is a link to Stonewall. If you've got money and you feel like donating some this Pride Month, make a trans person's day or donate to the one charity that needs our help, considering the absolute war against Stonewall at the moment by the far right and by, you know, the people of Turf Island. So yeah, if you've got some cash and you can spare a bit, send it to one of the transition funds or Stonewall. Thank you. See you all in 10 minutes where Connor Sansby is going to ta be taking over. Bye for now. Uh, performers, you can stay, hang, hang around and unmute if you want to chat. This is still going to be live, but so don't say anything incriminating, but you know, let's hang out. Could be just a little bit incriminating. I mean... Just as a treat. <laughs> Holy shit, what an amazing first half. You're all fantastic. Oh my Incredible. God. Everyone was great. Yeah, Ooh. it's been amazing. So good. I, just, um, I want to read Johnny Bravo uh, gets punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, Same. so do I. I need to write it first. <laughs> so <laughs> much. Maybe we could like do it as like a project and all contribute a verse oh or something. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so down I would be so up for that. Sorry, more than that though, I want your Twitter. <laughs> I want to be blocked. Yes. <laughs> if we pass the test, yeah. yeah exactly. Nobody's um, anybody until they've been blocked by Cybra. Uh, I'm <laughs> Tartan Lamb on Twitter, but I'm very sorry, I'll probably not block you because you seem kind of cool. Oh, thank you. On Twitter. Okay. I'll hold this against you now. If you <laughs> I'll be like, do you remember when you said this? <laughs> Huh? What's your what's your Twitter site? I'll drop it in, in chat. Everyone, everyone, drop your your Twitter, Instagram links in. Yeah, in chat. throw it everywhere. Oh, amazing, thank you. You can all go on <laughs> Facebook and drop it in the comment section on the live stream as well. But yeah, also in the Zoom chat for us. <sighs> so ah, good. I can't type. <laughs> Insta and Twitter. Oh.
good stuff on my main. Sorted. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> well, I'm so excited for the second half. <sighs> Me too. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you are. <laughs> yeah, I was starting to get a little bit tired, so I'm going to go and not. And then the energy <laughs> just went. Uh, <laughs> yeah, daughter is back home from university today. Well, sorry, daughter person is back home from university today and their stuff is everywhere, <laughs> which is exhausting. My neurodivergent brain goes, no, it all needs <laughs> to be in its place. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. Um, AJ, that uh, lipstick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's... um. So good. Thanks. Uh, it was a present from my sister-in-law. Uh, I think it's, hang on, I put it in my bag. Um, I think it's Sephora, um, which I wouldn't normally be able to afford, hence why it's a present. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it is, um, it's, hang on, I'm looking at the, uh, it's probably not gonna have it on the, oh, yeah, how am I supposed to read that? I think it's actually on that. Um, yeah, it's Sephora. It's I think it's I think it's shade number one, whatever that is. But yeah, that's 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 it basically. Brilliant, thank you. I do I do like a red lipstick. Yeah, I'm I'm always after a new red. The only reason I'm not wearing red today is because I did buy Pride Eyes. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god, they're so good. They are, they're really good. So I did buy pride eyes and I thought a neutral with that. Yeah. I attempted to do pan colour eyes, but they you can just about see the pink and the yellow and the blue, but they're not quite they're so cute though. Vibrant yeah. enough. <laughs> Thank you. Very you can cute. only really see when I close my eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know I have that problem too with eyeshadow, so I just can't be bothered anymore. <laughs> uh, I've got a glittery purple NYX lip gloss that I use sometimes, but I didn't have time today, but yeah, I'm a bit partial to a good purple, if you can't tell. <laughs> mm. oh. I found the lipstick. Nice. <laughs> I decided to cosplay as the gender binary today because I'm all in pink and blue. Nice. <laughs> oh, <yes>. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the scariest Halloween costume. I was cosplaying yeah. the gender non-binary because I was in grey, but now I've got cold, so I've got my mm -hmm. supernatural hoodie on. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, D, 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 D. I've seen that. Oh, I've is. seen that and I was like, ha, I spotted it. I spotted them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I've got the tracksuit bottoms that go with it as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Everything's a little bit geeky in this house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, wrapping my favourite uh, queer, one of my favourite queer clothing brands. It's a uh, nice. weird Wednesday on Instagram. It says, uh, never, no never not nervous. If you uh, it. And yeah, weird Wednesday. That is a good slogan. Queer owned clothing brand on Instagram. Plug. Fresh pizza, babe. <laughs> Bill's just re reheating the... pizza. Sorry, D. Um, I've got to uh, jump off now. I might try and come back for the second half, but I'm not sure if I can. But um, either way, it has been so lovely meeting you all. And I think I've followed everyone on the list. If I haven't, just follow me. I'll follow you back. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being such a lovely group of people. You're all wonderful. Thank you for coming. And absolutely yeah, you've been killing it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, that was great, your stuff. I, I, I love that. Um, sorry, I, I, I always feel bad in the first half thing, like when I'm the half of something before I go on, because like I can't pay enough attention, but I really liked your stuff. It was great. 
Don't worry. I, I'm I'm the same sometimes, but thank you for the compliment either way. Thank you guys. All right. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. And yeah. you. And you do. Really great yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Great Thanks to meet guys. you. All right. I'm going to jump off now. But like I said, just follow me. I'll follow you back. Have a wonderful evening and I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later. Connor, uh, the second half is yours, so you can bring us back whenever you fancy. Sorry, I was just eating fruit pastels. <laughs> nice. It is scientifically impossible to host a gig while eating fruit pastels. Oh, absolutely. Have you tried the new vegan ones? Uh, hang on. They're even, they're, they're even harder to uh, eat and do anything else with. Yes. Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they're really nice, those ones. They're absolutely incredible. I have been talking to Cetera <laughs> about how good these fruit pastels are. I'm, I'm a big fan of the mango sorbet ones. <gasps> they're, the, they're, they're the best in that pack, in my opinion. That sounds incredible. Shortly followed by the blueberry ones. So they're, 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 they are a dark horse because I'm not usually a blueberry fan, but they were nice. I feel, I feel like, like there's blueberry. I feel like there's a whole new world of fruit pastels I've I was not even aware of. Why? Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dessert pastels. There's a uh, apple crumble, blueberry muffin or blueberry pie, mango sorbet, and Eaton mess, or is it cherry bakewell? That um, sounds damn good. <laughs> Cherry Bakewell, blueberry pie, apple crumble, mango sorbet. That's it. I got them all eventually. But yeah, they're really good. They're a lot chewier than normal fruit pastels, though. They're like, they stay in your mouth for longer. If that's no, we've, we've just answered the question. If you get a group of poets together, what will they talk about? <laughs> Whatever someone's eating. <laughs> and lipstick and clubs. Lipstick and um, pastels. <laughs> yeah. Have I told you all that I, I saw bears the other day? You sent me photos, dude. I think I sent you like 25 photos of yeah. bears. They're well, cool. where are my bear photos? I, I, will, I will send you literally all of the bear photos. Thank so you. They got into a fight about who was going to eat a, bar, a branch. I was going to say a twig. It was a branch. They're bears. <laughs> um, oh, the bears are just so good. Oh, um, fantastic. It's the I'm one who's hiding in the tree who's my favourite. Because oh, oh. he's not hiding very well. No, he's stealthy. <laughs> he's stealthy and invisible, Dean. <laughs> um, honestly, honestly, um, bears are the best, all of them. Um, and what makes these bears best of all is that they were from like a bear hunting facility like originally so that like the, the when they got to like the this this place was the first time they'd like stepped foot on grass so like these bears did not have their bearishness like innately they they have had bareness thrust upon them and they are excelling <laughs> fantastic they are the best bears um apparently there's two more like joining them and Those that, the pictures of the ones that are on their back with the tummies out, and you just want to scratch their tummies. And and yes, I will die trying to pet something I shouldn't. Oh, absolutely. One of my favourite groups is um, bears have absolutely no right to be as cute as they are. Yes, same. <laughs> yeah. That brought me to that group, actually. Just real good. My mum spent the whole time telling the bears that it was okay if they ate a small child. Like, <laughs> I can love your mum. <laughs> if that's what the bears wanted to do, that's totally fine. How is your mum? I haven't seen her for ages. She's good. She's had one of those days off work and she spent the whole afternoon like napping, which nice. she, des she deserves richly. Did she tell? Did she tell them there was any specific small children they should eat, or is this just carte blanche to eat any small child? Bear's choice. Uh. Right. <laughs> bears are allowed to do literally whatever they want by virtue of being bears. 
Uh, my favourite bear fact is bears in the wild have been spotted looking at like the view from over some cliffs or like waterfalls and just sitting there for a while and like scientists can't work out what they're doing and the closest like thing to an answer is that bears have a concept of beauty and find these environments like <sighs> beautiful which number one that's incredible number two though what have they got to worry about just sitting around staring at nothing what's going to attack them a bear <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant! Once you once you read bear on the uh, the scale, you you've not got anything to worry yeah. about in the in the world. Yeah, true. In case it's not already obvious, if you want to know anything about bears, talk to Connor. That's very good. Who is in fact a bear? He is um, the bear of Kent. Yeah. The uh, the scientific name for brown bears is uh, Ursus arctus arctus which means um, horrible bear bear, which is actually wrong because they're actually really good bears. <laughs> which one like qualifies as a good bear? What, what, what is a bad bear? There I'm, isn't I'm one. <laughs> Koala. Koalas, they're a disgrace to the, uh, to the name bear. But they're not bears, but they are look they? so cute when they're all like hanging out on a tree and just like... Koalas are yeah. so evolutionary deficient that if you offer one of them a eucalyptus leaf, which is the only food that they will eat, despite the fact it's terrible for them, they won't know what to do with it. You offer them a leaf, they don't understand what the leaf is because they only recognise the leaf by virtue of pulling it off the branch. Like, that's nonsense. They yeah. can't even have salmon. They're terrible. Koalas Ko are slated for extinction. Yeah, and you know what? They deserve it. Drop bears, on the other hand, the very real bear of Australia. Fantastic. I think koala bears just have principles. You know, they, <laughs> they, they don't want to take the food that you're just like handing them. They, yeah, they, they don't feel too good about that. They, Koalas they don't want have you a like condescending to them. <laughs> you're crappy <laughs> eucalyptus. The idea that the koalas are like, fuck you, I'll get my own leaf. Yeah. <laughs> Koalas don't want your pussy. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm team koala on this one, I'm sorry. <laughs> come to Sandpoint Starstep Club for food, lipstick, and hair <laughs> on koala discourse. <sighs> How long we got, Con? Um, I'm saying two minutes. Okay. I'm I've actually preparing got preparing myself right, again. Talking about bears. <laughs> what about sun bears? Sun bears what do you think like about them. sun bears? Sun bears are cool. Bears sun bears are lovely. I went to a sun bear sanctuary in now a couple of times, oh. and they're so they're so beautiful. Yes. Connie, you said the horrible bear bear. Which one is the bear bear bear? I'm sure there's a bear bear bear. Um, no, it's uh, it's it's grizzlies that um, I think are given um, bear bear bear. <laughs> bear bear bear. It's the best name. Uh, Science is fucking awesome. <laughs> I really so the two scientific names that I'm big fans of. One of them is uh, the Western Lowland Gorilla, which is just Gorilla, 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 and the other one is the Zynga Fish, which lives in one river in China, and that's taxonomical name is Zynga, 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 which is just weird and therefore the best. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, science is fucking wonderful. Whoever decided, whoever came up with the naming conventions is a fucking genius. I mean, obviously, but the sheer comedic value in it as well is perfect. Charles Linnea. No idea. How much of an elaborate shit poster were they? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I've done this. This means I am taking over in case. Uh... My monologue about bears wasn't enough of me taking over the stream. <laughs> uh, I am now taking over. My friend who is watching on Facebook live stream says, what about the hair bear? Oh, the hair bear. Oh, that's a very rare bun uh, bunch of bears. I've only heard. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Fiona. Now you know. <laughs> right, I'm muting again now then. So you could say that the hair bears are rare bear? Yeah, exactly that. 
Um, so, hello, welcome back. Uh, this is the second half of uh, Sad Poets Doorstep Club slash Whiskey and Beards, uh, raising money for uh, Pride Month. In the comments of this video, there are three uh, fundraisers that you can uh, donate money to. You can also find other fundraisers and donate money towards them because like, that would be great. Um, so yeah, uh, there's two individuals. Um, if you're one of these people who likes to give their money directly to a charity, they're a Stonewall, they do fantastic work, there is literally no good reason not to give money to Stonewall as far as I'm concerned. Or, like I say, if you want to see your money go towards a uh, more direct action, um, then there are two individuals, two fund uh, in the comments. Comments, comments, comments. I'm going to be plugging that lots because I'd like to raise money. Um, yeah. Uh, so that, that first half was absolutely incredible. Um, honestly, you're absolutely lost in it. Brilliant. Um, you all kick ass. Uh, so as the, the format goes, uh, I'm starting this half off with one of my poems. And then I have a slate of really cool uh, talent to show you here. Uh, the whole lineup, just in general, we were like, oh, they're great. They're great. They're great. We got to cherry pick really nicely. It was fantastic. Uh, I'm currently writing a lot about the sea because um, no one's ever written a poem about the sea um, in history, ever. Um, I was raised in a seaside town. I still live here. I spent like one year living away from the sea and I realised I didn't know which direction I was facing, which seems like such a weird complaint. But yeah, I can always tell where I am like in the world because oh the sea's that side or it's that side that means i'm this way uh yeah my whole framing of the world is built on the sea so i've decided to write a book about the sea and it's all uh weird i'm um framing it as uh william blake on lsd hopefully so the vision um there's lots of stuff in it that doesn't work necessarily like performancey it's more paid poetry it's a lot of fun to write but it means i have to keep going uh not inside what's that place called outside the place with the people not a fan um but yeah so uh this is called the sun is slash not god i may have been a corpse this evening until the tide rolled in left me festering on the beach like dogfish after a storm I spit out sand like bad words, cussing the earth from which I am made. I cast pebbles over the water, beating Morse code across the rippling water. I recognise the futility, but sometimes we just want to spit in the face of God. The sea is where we go to lose our faith. It becomes impossible to believe in something more when we can just look out across the infinite and know for certain. So that's a fun poem. Um, <laughs> Tesco. Tesco is the place with the people. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Um, so uh, the first poet of uh, this half, um, uh, not someone that I knew before we were putting this together, but I did a Google and looked up some of my work and I really loved it. Uh, so I'm really excited. Uh, Caleb Nichols is a queer poet from San Luis Ob uh, Obispo, California. His poetry has been featured in Hoax, Red Divider, uh, Per Happened Mag, Dear Poetry Journal and elsewhere, Caleb starts a PhD in creative writing at Bangor University in fall 2021. Please give it up for Caleb Nichols. Thanks so much. I'm going to start my timer so I um, know how long I've been going because <laughs> I like to plan enough. Um, I'm going to read some poems from some stuff in progress. Most of it has not been published anywhere. Some of it has. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really happy to be here. And one of the pandemic silver linings is that these sorts of things make it possible for me to, you know, uh, go to readings in the UK while I'm in California and, and participate. So I love, I've been really loving that. So, okay. First couple poems are from a manuscript that I'm calling Princess Diaries, um, which is all about gender. And um, I'm going to read two of those to start with. So this one's called um, Princess Diaries number one, Bell. <clears throat> I made a tiny sandwich that caused me to dissociate when I raised one neatly sliced half to my mouth. Dwarfed as it was by my hand, it looked like a sandwich might look on psilocybin mushrooms, 
sort of funny, sort of terrifying. And in that shroomy space between the giggles and the screams, which I imagine is the neat slice between each hemisphere of my brain, there's a ticklish spot that goes, ha ha ha, no, no, no. And that's where I found Belle, laid out in the gutter of my corpus colossum, crying plaintively, bonjour, 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 bonjour. This is Princess Diaries number two, Ariel. There's the Ariel whose tongue was cut out, who became sea foam. Then there's the Ariel who kept her tongue and became presumably happy. The piece that matters though is this, that both prayed for transformation, that both saw the boy and that's when they knew. What's the word? Burn. And isn't this why little boys like me were discouraged from learning myths like this? And didn't you feel desire at a tender age? And didn't you find a place to put it? I was like Ariel. I wished, would lay in bed and pray, make me thinner, make me thinner, make me thinner, which feels dangerously close to, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. And I can see now that this desire for divine erasure was really me praying, let me be her, let me be her, let me be her. Okay, this one is called Life on Mars, which was published by Hoax uh, just a, a month ago or so. Um, and it is in, kind of in response to the Perseverance Mars rover landing, but also um, the Elon Musk quote, which I've epigraphed at the beginning, which says, I am accumulating resources to help make life multiplanetary and extend the light of consciousness to the stars, Elon Musk. So this is life on Mars. <clears throat> yes, Mars still glows red from our earthbound slant, but perseverance has shown that mostly it's just, oh, you know, I've got to stop. I'm so sorry. Content warning for um, homophobic slur that I use throughout this. So. I'm gonna do that again, really sorry to not do that. So content warning, homophobic slur, if you don't wanna hear that, mute. Uh, life on Mars. Yes, Mars still glows red from our earthbound slant, but perseverance has shown that mostly it's just dirt colored, dusty. What it needs are some faggots to brighten its dim corners, real vibrant earth queers, Elon. And some of us are wondering, will there be faggots on Mars? And how does one procure a seat on the chrome dipped rocket ship? And how does one become the payload in the tip? Will it ferry ferries across that sticks, mouths full of crypto into the new world of the dead planet? Or will it be predictably Gattaca? Perfect male, perfect female, Nazi shit. The crisper kissed children of the neo-natural order who appreciate power, collared, branded, crowned with the apartheid emeralds X ash A12 brought along as worry stones. It's easier for me to imagine the Mars occupation, the Jupiter moon missions, the Earth two type long hauls as strictly business and as such straight intergalactic missionary, missionary intergalactic, seeding the Martian core with some sort of terraforming hydrogen bomb, which will no doubt transform its surfaces into something resembling Irvine, California, a master planned community, a dull suburban planet where everything is as nature, scratch that morality intended, ones into zeros, the crooked places made straight, the kinks worked out, the right pills swallowed, and so, no, I don't expect there will be faggots on Mars or any other signs of life. Thanks. Um, the next one, I think I'm gonna try this. This is really, this. Will, I think it's gonna be hard for this to translate, but I wanted to try it anyway. It's really new. It's from a new manuscript I'm working on called, um, words and music which pairs songs and poems sort of together in conversation with each other so this first one's called the fall um and it's paired with the song let's do it written by cole porter as sung by ella fitzgerald so we'll try to make sense of this the fall birds do it the world fucks bees do it, it is a lung Romantic sponges, they say, do it. 
is a stately pleasure dome. Oysters down in Oyster Bay, the original sin. In shallow shoals was shame. Cold Cape Cod clams, one day Adam woke up. Against their wish, and Steve was pulling. Electric eels on his pants, even lazy jellyfish licking his lips. Do it, turning away. Let's do it towards the garden gate. Let's fall. I don't know how that worked. Um, thank you. This one is not like that. It is more narrative and it is called Kodiak Salmon Packers. And it might be my last poem. And it is about a summer I spent in Alaska at a salmon cannery <laughs> randomly. Kodiak Salmon Packers. This far north, June glooms so thick, it clouds into fine rainfall. Mountains as big as mountains can be. Fat pink salmon swimming down the line sea of knives, not the stream they had intended. The sharp smell of blood, of tin cans popping on the dock, of rubber booted men in retort steam lined up at midnight, grubby, ruddy, oil slick, Sleepless men as big as men can be, rough edged, jagged, whiskey tough, cued and waiting for a cup of something sweet or bitter, even if it's just the dregs. Drifting off to sleep, a soft low voice seems the indigo, depths of the bunkhouse. I wish there was something exciting we could do. And then a slow, steady reaching through the pale summer near Alaskan dawn and the feeling of falling as gentle summer rain. Thank you, those are my poems. Thank you so much for being here watching and having me. Absolutely fantastic, mate. Oh, incredible. Um, I, I love the way you're breaking your lines. It, it mean like it's it's flow essentially from rap terminology, isn't it? Um, yeah, absolutely incredible. And I mean, a poem about salmon. I don't know why, but some on deep spiritual level. I love that. Um, no idea why. Um, brilliant, mate. Absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, fantastic. Um, our next poet uh, coming up uh, is a familiar name to me. Um, last. Last year, oh god, last year, uh, I ran a thing called Winchester Fest, which was like a hundred day live streaming festival. It's where we got the idea to do this kind of format thing. Um, and they're absolutely incredible. Uh, and when I saw them on the list of, of potential people, I was like, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, please. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, a little burp. Normally, when I'm hosting, I just burp straight into a microphone, and that's hilarious to me, but I can't do it online because mics aren't that loud. Um, anyway, uh, Karis Hanna is a neurodivergent poet and musician from Birmingham, England. She is a multiple slam winner who has performed internationally. Her debut collection, Broken Compass, was published by Burning Eye Books in 2018. Please give it up for Karis Hanna. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Connor and Crow. And hi, everybody. This has been a really incredible event. I've loved hearing everybody's poems so far. So I am really honored to be a part of this. Um, I'm going to start with this poem. It's called The Woman in Koh Lanta. We met five days after Christmas. You offer me half a joint and a banana pancake. We talked about Monsanto and Neil deGrasse Tyson. I liked you instantly. On New Year's Eve, we wrote each other love notes in the sand as we watched the paper lanterns ascend into the night. Each one a piercing reminder of the last 12 months released and burning in effigy. That's that one. Um, my second poem is in three parts. And this is called Reclaim the Walls. Part one. It's half past two on a Sunday afternoon. I've barely left my bed when my phone goes off. I stumble to the other room where I left it. It's this girl I know. More of an acquaintance than a friend. I think she's pretty cool though. She says, look, I don't know if you're busy, 
And I know we've never really hung out, but I'd appreciate your company if you happen to be about C. Everything is just shit right now. And instead of moping about indoors, I wonder if you fancy helping me tag some walls. Wear dark clothes. I'll lend you a hoodie and some gloves. Oh, and don't forget to wear your trainers in case we have to run off. So I meet her at the underpass. The same one where the council blasted off her last display and the two before that. We face the wall spray cans in hand ready for combat. She tapes her stencil to the surface, steps back and prepares for attack, swoops and takes down one brick at a time. I peel back the acetate to reveal clean lines resembling those written by a naughty school kid in dry white pen. I will not spray paint on this wall again. I will not spray paint on this wall again. I will not spray paint on this wall again. Part two. Now I'm a big ball of adrenaline swooning over my new heroine witnessing her redefine the concept of all that's feminine. Cause she's a work of art in motion, a vision in rotoscope, like a scanner darkly, and I'm crushing on her as she's crushing the patriarchy. And I'm not sure if it's the paint fumes or the butterflies, but I'm struggling to get my breath back. She hands me her spray can and tells me to finish off where she left up. Part three. A week has now passed and my high is continuing on an upward spiral and news of our little act of vandalism has since gone viral and various theories concerning our identities have since been reported and we just laugh along because we don't want to get deported and yet I feel a combination of smugness and frustration when my news feed is littered with pictures of our reclaimed walls accompanied by captions stating I don't know who these blokes are but damn they've got some balls thank you that's that one so I keep going to mute myself and I'm like I don't need to mute myself it's just one one ongoing um, performance <laughs> I've been doing a lot of audio gigs on Clubhouse lately and when you're done speaking you usually mute yourself and I have to remember that you don't have to do that on Zoom um this next poem I actually just wrote a few minutes ago during the 10 minute break so it's a bit of a risk doing it but it's kind of cobbled together from lines from old poems that I discarded so it's a bit of a Frankenstein poem I will give a content warning for homophobia specifically um, people who use religion as an excuse to try and justify their homophobia so a little bit of a back story um i was raised a christian i was raised in the church my dad is a retired pastor my parents are absolutely wonderful people they're they're incredible progressive loving people to me they embody what a christian should be like and um i used to live in south korea and i had been very hurt by a lot of people in the church again not my parents um other people and I found a queer affirming church with um, a gay pastor and um, my very dear friend Rick, who I met at the church actually a few weeks ago, he was ordained as a bishop in Thailand and um, I watched his ordination on, on Zoom, it happened over Easter weekend and it was really, really beautiful. So um, this is a piece that I want to dedicate to all of my queer Christian friends. And yeah, again, um, trigger warning. In Sunday school, we were told, whenever you see a rainbow, remember God is love. In Sunday school, we were told, whenever you point a finger, there are three pointing back at you. In Sunday school, we were told to love the sinner, hate the sin. In Sunday school, we were told, God loves everyone. In my church, we're told to rock our rainbows with pride. In my church, we're told whenever you point a finger, there are three pointing back at you. In my church, we're told there's nothing simple about loving someone of the same gender. 
or any gender. In my church, we're told God loves everyone, no exceptions. To be a Christian means to be a follower of Christ, to be Christ-like, to be like Christ, Christ, the man who flipped over tables and trashed the temple, Christ who hung out with sex workers, Christ who never once condemned homosexuality, Christ who said, let he who has not sinned cast the first stone. And some of the most Christ-like people I know are members of the LGBTQ plus community. And you can call me blasphemous all you want, but I believe that if Jesus walked the earth today, he'd probably be marching in the pride parade. That's that. And if you tuned out, uh, that poem is now finished. I'm incredibly sweaty for some reason. I don't know why it might be my ring light. And I'm just going to see how much time I've got left. And I've actually gone over my limit. So I am going to end my set now. And thank you all so much for listening. I'm so honored to be a part of this wonderful night. And lots of love to everybody. Can't wait to hear the rest of the poems and the rest of the poets. Thank you all. Bye. Woo Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, the people who are watching on Facebook can't see the the chat all through the night. Obviously, people have been talking about how great, um, uh, like uh, the work has been. Uh, one of the comments that was uh, during that po um, that set, sorry, was was just how great the uh, the approach to rhythm is within that, and it's something I always find myself absolutely focusing on um, in other people's work. I absolutely rate you. Please do more poems all the time um i think that's a reasonable request um our next poet uh is someone i know in meat space the real world um which is uh awesome um i'm gonna see him next week again socially distanced and everything and i'm really excited about that um because he's he's fantastic and uh you're all gonna agree with me after his set as well so uh, Jake Nathan is a spoken word poet, rapper and artist from London. His poetry explores themes of mental health and the British working class experience. Uh, I just need to find him on the sidebar. Please give it up for Jake Nathan. Hello. Um, <clears throat> just before I get started, you can follow me on Instagram at points by Jake Nathan. Um, I'm just starting my timer, so. I don't have to ask Crow. Um, right, so trigger warning. If you vote Tory, you're not going to like any of the next three poems. Um, fuck the Tories. Uh, so this one is called um, Here's the Thing. Here's the fucking thing, right? They couldn't care less about us. The upper crust in their three-story houses, double pleated trousers, little finger pricked up as they drink their fucking tea. Teacups, of course, not mugs like us, the working class, they trick into voting for these cunts. Our best interests are not what they like to invest in. Resting soundly in their beds, not stressed about rent because mummy and daddy bought them their first gaff. They don't know what it's like to have ever fucking struggled. Snuggled under a blanket because the heating's so expensive. Yes, kids, the radiators are working, but we can't afford to have them on all the time. And they're the fucking lucky ones because some mums can't turn them on at all. No sorry kids, nothing. They're fighting to survive. Heating's the last thing on their mind when they're scrapping just to buy food. They don't have meetings in five-star restaurants, mini breaks in Mauritius, suspicious offshore bank accounts. They didn't get taught what they teach at Eaton, how to be a sociopath and kill off an underclass. Single mothers with banged up brothers who have never crossed their moneyed minds. We're the flies they swat away at garden parties. The muck they ride past on their horses. Remorseless, they hoard their wealth like dragons and couldn't possibly fathom living on anything less than 100k. We exist to make the things that make their money, to fight their wars and no more. We're born poor and stay there, expected to play fair, but they make the rules and the tools for success are reserved for their schools. We are the result of generations of propaganda about what and who we should be. We see neighbours as enemies because they say so in the red tops in carefully worded articles right next to the tits. We are the great unwashed, the perpetually squashed, the who the fuck you think you are, the go and get a jobs. 
with the rubble cleaning up their floors, the carpenters who build their doors just so they can close them on us, lock us out and work us more. We're deliberately placated, completely undereducated, taught not to have ambition, not to dream beyond your door. Stay where you are, boy. Do what you're told, girl. It's their world, not yours. So that's that one. Um, next one I'm going to do is change. It feels like change is coming. Discontent is in the air and we swear we will not allow this to happen again. Pretend that we don't see injustice. Watch as murderers walk free. You see, we're angry now and we need to be because with the world at our fingertips, our privilege meant we still didn't learn. And while some of us can see it now, others wear ignorance like their favorite coat. Quote platitudes and what abouts rather than listen. Our system encourages that because a misinformed majority plays perfectly for men in ivory towers. Their powers are not questioned by minds whose eyes look elsewhere for the problem. The common enemy is a foreign enemy because we were taught by their captors. Those in victory write history and it doesn't matter that they didn't fight fair. Statues fall at the feet of open minds, but so many haven't found their key. They're hidden behind the queen and country leaders leave them there. It feels like change is coming until they try to fish statues out of water. Stand in the path of progress and make monkey noises. This apple is rotten. The poison runs deep. It feels like change is coming, but history, but history, but history is on repeat. Thank you. Um, so this last one is, uh, I guess, content warning for anxiety. There's not that much in there, though. I wouldn't worry. Um, where am I? Here I am. This is one of my newest poems. I wrote, I wrote this uh, more recently than all the others on this, I think, uh, this set, I think. I need you now more than ever. The world's gone to pot and whether, you, whether or not you believe it can get better, the pleasure of spending time with you helps. Left to my own devices, crisis is round the corner. I'll fuck everything up if you give me long enough. So just you checking in steadies this wobbly mind of mine. The world feels increasingly fractured, manufactured and vacuous and so, so full of hate. We're played against each other in a game of real or fake news and you choose a side, but they're sure to abuse any who choose differently. The problem is, even though we need unity, when they stupidly back the posh prat in number 10, who proves time and again that he's only out for his lot, it sparks fury inside me. So when you reach out and ask, how you doing, mate? When I reply, I'm struggling to exist in this piss take of the world, and you laugh, it helps. All right, thank you. So I'm going to move on to some mental health poems now. Maybe just one, actually. My time's running out pretty quick. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll just do... We'll see how it goes. Um, this one's called um, Tripping Over Thoughts. I'm tripping over thoughts. My mind just might be full. Overdose on overthinking, man, I can't see through. I can't see who I am, I might be stuck here. Crushed by avalanches of ideas and I fear that I won't breathe again. I'm feeling manic. A breath of fresh air, some relief from the panic. Too many thoughts, I'm too deep and I'm drowning. Please can someone tell me now which way is up? Because I'm halfway to fucked and I can feel it. My mind has come unstuck and I just find that it's revealing the darkest of my thoughts and I can't take it anymore. Something turning in and now they're flooding through the door. My legs are getting sore from carrying the weight of the world. The full picture of this beast that lives inside is unfurled. This many-legged creature running rampant from my mind space, taking what it likes and doing damage to my mind state. Flicking through my thoughts to throw mistakes back in my face. I'm climbing up the walls, I can't escape the thoughts. They're my fate. I'm irate. I can't stop these thoughts from churning. It's hurting. These coping mechanisms aren't working. My thoughts just run in loops and I can feel it, man. I'm circling my sanity because actually I'm panicking and scared. Um, that basically has put me on perfect. Three, two, one. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic timing, Jay. 
Uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, Jake uh, did a whole a rap song about professional wrestling, which uh, is absolutely brilliant. Um, oh, why didn't you bring that one? Uh, I, I, I do please, please just drop it in the comments. Um, but yeah, it, it's absolutely cracking. Um, boom, boom, boom. Um, our next poet is someone else who I uh, have never heard before uh, researching this um, this event. Um, a lot of people on here are people that I know from uh, other gigs or real life, um, but I didn't just want to book all my mates, even though they're very cool. Um, so we had this big list and we were going through and I was Googling everyone and checking out their stuff. And this is uh, another poet that I saw and went, oh yeah, we should get them, they're, they're cool. Um, <clears throat> Barney Ashton Bullio is widely published in cult poetry journals, has a pamphlet called Cafe Kaput and two poetry journals, Fuck Pig Zeitgeist and Bula uh, alongside his albums with Andy Bell and DBA. Sorry, tech issue there. Uh, please give it up for Barney. Wow. Woo! <laughs> so good to be here. Um, thank you, Connor for and and uh, sad poets doorstep club so um this is uh, from from the book that came out last year the um cafe kaput uh with broken sleep um content warning really is it's it's kind of about a compromised relationship joggers the strewn stricken jilted joggers befilthed in littering in crusted carpets and i smudge trawl through the gates and girths of all in scuba search of the pearls conched within of turdy street kecks and jammy socks to boil wash such is my glee to be a licky licky retriever getting a modicum of affirmation for such things as lubricant to scant pleasant trees instead of unfathomable distancing mood swings from sir lazy ass about how i don't do a fucking thing the swing and bulge of his genital flopsies seems to be his raison d'etre along with his untrue conceit that no one could love or fuck me better and my raison d'etre <laughs> to help him forget her. So, um, the, the musical project that I'm in with um, uh, Andy uh, from Eurasia is um, called Andy Bellis Torsten, who's a sort of a polysexual, semi-immortal being, and there are spin-off um, poetry books from that and this is one that came out just a few months ago through Cherry Red Records. This is called, um, it's from Fuck Pig Zeitgeist, this is called Pride Parade. A capsize of intent. Barbed words won't suture these wounds. They won't wend a wending way to belated unity. We strayed with open hearts that we found but void darkness beyond the chamera doesn't a mercy fuck triple we mercenaries tallying near misses on abikai of anxiety the floozies thought butterfly by the slam dunk smarm cut of, of blogger learnt chat up charm yet i in turn Floozied by your flitting, miscued rationale, an uplift of handsome kiss from your bespoke sang fried jib. And thus, your damp squib duly dibbed our hearse hole in a dip of dusklight, as if my body were mere kissing gate to unlatch to the thoroughfares beyond through which you cantered to a semblance of our yesteryears. I palmed your clingy jizz and finger flicked it bit by bit from the crumbling Juliet balcony onto that shape-shifting one-time us duetting deliriously drunk at some golden age drear of demodé parochial 
bygone pride parade. One of my favourite poems is um, one that got published in um, Queerlings in February this year. Um, it's about that kind of unyielding kind of yearning that you that I think stays with you for a long time um, when when you really were kind of um, into somebody in your younger life you know and you can't kind of give up the ghost this is called derelict a feigned matey hatred that we glipped so well in our bespoke subglottal slore in which we regaled Gutter heart poets whose ashen lips were for sale and chain letter love notes we wrote, but never mailed. All fugitive eulogists arrested by memories never lived, hung on clawing prawns of rhetorical what ifs. The waiting room is to be boarded up, the rails rust to powder, the track bed scuffed up with the sapling shift into new life. And you write with your caked lip salve on the cracked mottled mirror, words scrawled and impenetrable about lost chances incalculable, about your valiant waiting, even when the first nails to rotting frames are mauled in light Henceforth will slither through slits, but still, the love of your life, you think, will find you in this derelict. Oh, my next work was uh, uh, one of two that was published by um, an online blog called the Babel Tower Notice Board. Um, there are references to um, gay sex in this um, as a content warning. It's called um, Top a Top. We bunked the high school's last pontifical high mass, found a mossy rot tour of junked old desks, warped veneers shearing like butterfly cakes, their varnish cracked to ash, atop archival graph tag curses. X, Y or Z are fucking queers. We toked a shared consulate. You kissed me in a lilt of threnody. You felt cool as a mountain stream. You read it on the box as our school days reached their fag end. We heard in the drowse of distance the canticle chore as our jaws slurred demure sexual intent before kissing dick dish deep again. The sanctus bells trilled, the set piece transubstantiation altar top textbook miracles as we merged into one divinity atop the skewered discard lol of desks and were mutually reborn in a viscous riptide of spermy aspergers deo queer redemption my saint stretched blessed doused psalming its all new blessed anoint of alleluia etc thank you Sorry, computer issues then. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, you have this incredible gift of um, these, these tiny little gems, like two words with just the perfect counterpoint with each other. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm hugely envious. Uh, absolutely incredible work. Um, next up is uh, one of my favorite poets and people, um, I know I've said that before, but it's true. I know lots of cool people uh, not to brag. Um, they are uh, part of the editorial team, I think, of Whiskey and Beers. They're so good. I, I should just give them money, frankly. Um, 
Setra Ebrahimi is an Iranian British poet currently living in Ramsgate. She has published two books, In My Arms with Bad Betty Press and Galloping Horses from Words to Three. Please put your hands together when I find her on the sidebar for Setra Ebrahimi. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. And um, sorry about that noise earlier. Um, I know my video has been off for um, some of this, but I have been listening to everyone um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, this poem is called Nail and Rock. Disused Victorian hotel with a 1950s or 60s asbestos extension. That's the dining room. I went through there and it's a beautiful view of the sea. The proprietor seems to be an old lady with no guests, a dog and a little girl. The manager of pretension come to gentrify the town. There's faux Havisham plastic flowers, too many large photos of someone's yellowing wedding. Outside daisies and buttercups are scattered like birdseed. The sunset is a neon egg cracked in the sky. She cried, so you took her down to the ocean where she settled for rocks and clumps of sand. My beloved ants. There is a bird in a cage in the hallway. Blown panes with nests next to those intact jar the boundary between inside and out. Poetry will take us to strange places, people I didn't necessarily like as I read a staggered text that sounded like the nonsense writing of the woodland creatures during the Red Queen's trial. A few people watched and asked polite questions. I feel fragile, like my spine is a stick in the wind. Police sirens wail outside. Thank you. Uh, this poem is called Wild Garlic. That which grows freely and is overlooked for me to take. Mother, lover, my friend in the grass, under the willow, by the creek. Can I be an egg in your pantry? We meet illegally in the park and once we tore each other apart. I tried to pot you, now I live like a ranger. Enjoy everything under the sun, but will not disturb one thing. Instead, I wring dry moments, become different in them each time. What shapes I make with fallen petals. When I close the door behind me, the world dematerializes and I lie faceless and gelatinous, breath shallow. You, textured and bejeweled, surface where babies crawl, grew straight out of the dirt. This herb is a cloth to you, each night you sew a different dress. You are my place on the inside of the rattling window and the one I roll within the hedgerow. Despite all noise, there is only one choice. As I tend to my mundanity, I think of you out there and I'm able to continue. Thank you. Uh, this poem is called The Last Time I Saw Passion Flower Vine and I wrote it for the uh, late Rosemary McLeish who was um, a great poet, mentor, and friend. The first time was at primary school. A boy didn't believe me that it wasn't a real flower. I didn't know its name, had the power of right words, and it became lost art. I came to them again in your garden, a whole wall like open faces to kiss those in memory, interlocking hands. Recently, they were at Friends where my baby took her on steady steps and played with overhanging bed sheets like ship sails. I didn't want to see them on your ocean box in ridiculously beautiful surrounds. Coots too nonchalant, bouquets turning brown, yellow, crisp. We must stop pretending we mean nothing to each other, like the single, previously absent sunflower that greeted me when I got home, or the hedgehog that spent long moments staring at me with more than animal in its eye, while I stared right back. Thank you, and this is my last poem. It's called My Mother's Watch. The only watch I want to wear is from a time past. Its gold is cracked and organic, the skin of a big, peaceful creature. Its restraint is thin and minimal. It only wants to hold on. Its glass has fallen out, like the truth. Now its dial hooks snag my wrists and make time stop and start in fits. I do not want to fight it. We will simply stare each other out till I might have it fixed. Won't that be glorious? I'll be a girl whose arm is always held to cross the road, armed with an echo. 
I must collect all my mother's things after she has left them, and the light of her touch fades in them, a veteran resuscitating patients at random. Mostly I pick myself off the floor. I don't want to destroy her possessions after she has lost so much. Thank you so much to Connor and Crow for having me. Thanks a lot. Woo! Woo -woo -woo! Yes, sir! Yeah, um, so it's one of those poets that makes me wish I spent more time uh, writing. Um, oh, bless you, bless your soul. I should up my game every time, it's fantastic. Um, huge, huge thanks. Um, and that brings us to the uh, the last poet of the evening, our second headliner. Um, not someone I've known for a huge amount of time, but they are also one of my favourite people. Um, they are just an endless whirlwind of positivity and interestingness. Um, if that's interestingness, yeah, that's definitely a word, right? Um, Dee Dickens lives on a mountain in Wales with her partner in crime and two shedding familiars. They're fantastic, by the way. Um, this is where she summons the Eldrick and taps into the pe uh, in taps on pieces of plastic. Blah, 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 blah. Taps on pieces of plastic to make people hallucinate. She is very fond of ribs. Please give it up for Dee Dickens. Hey, thank you for that amazing introduction. I mean, it wouldn't be any better if I wrote it myself, I'll wait. Okay, so I'm going to do hopefully six poems. I have set my timer for the 15 minutes. And the first one is not very cheerful, but it's a tribute to my friend who supports me through everything and supported me through my recent cancer scare, even though he's going through his own shit. So this poem is called My Friend John. Brandishing bravery against evil Saboris, John stalks the mean streets of Northampton, searching for the grail of better days. I want to bestow on him the gift of time, be the bard that sings fight, always fight, while he's brandishing bravery against evil Saboris. A stage four warrior, he's been fighting so long, he sends me presents and calls me a badass while searching for the grail of better days. Do you know how hard it is to write when your friend is going to die? How a villanelle just won't cut it. So let me tell you about my friend John. John defended me when I needed it the most. He's one of the nerdiest people on the planet. He sends me presents with River Song on them and Frida Kahlo. And he thinks me a Khaleesi and my friend Johnny never gives up. He's been injected by the tribe of oncology and got close, so fucking close to surgery. So close he can almost taste the marshmallows that are the only perk of having a stoma then in the same week i got the all clear he has just two fucking years to live or 18 months or less than that a lot fucking shitting less than that the worst thing is i knew it was coming I did so much research and we speak the same language we're both so pragmatic we can read the wall writing in the message where he told me, he said, I'm OK, because those of us fighting the warriors and the warriors, we know the first question. It comes with a gentle tilt of the head and a half smile, asks in the very sincerest of voices. Well, I'm sending him the dankest memes, the ones with Batman being a hero who doesn't do that, and Padme and Anakin and anything I can find that will distract him for a millisecond, a millisecond's worth of serotonin, of forgetting, of just letting yourself be in the moment. My friend John calls his cancer Boris, and they live in a space of not knowing, just living, and my friend John has never known from one day to the next what is working and what is not, and my John, friend John has the best eyes and smile, and he loves John, Doctor Who, and Doctor John, and I love him, and my friend John, he's going to die. Thank you. So next one um, is after my, my lovely, lovely Tyrone Lewis. He did a joke called Man Walks Into a Bar and I was ready to kill him for it until I heard it. So I've written this one and there's um, a content warning, I suppose, for suicidal ideation and abuse 
So this is a horse walks out into a bar after Tyrone Lewis. Lewis. Hey, want to hear a joke? What do you call a horse who lives next door? Neighbour! <laughs> horse tries to run away. It's a terrible tale of whoa! Horse walks into a bar. Barman says, hey. Horse says, yes, please. Horse walks into a bar. Barman offers a glass of water. Horse says, I'm not drinking that. This is not an idiom. It's a joke. You get that the horse is just me, right? That I'm the joke. Okay, so horse walks into a bar and the barman says, why the long face? PTSD, says the horse. Horse walks into a bar, fucks the first stranger who buys it a drink. Horse walks out of a bar, catches sight of itself in a window. Don't eat for three days. Horse falls in love with the first horse to show it some attention because of course it does. Why wouldn't it? Horse gets changed midstream, is sure it must be something it did, shaves its mane off. Horse goes into therapy, spends the first session comforting the therapist. The horse bolts, stable door gets closed. The horse is relieved it can't return to a burning barn. Horse feels the wind in its face. Horse has dyspraxia, trips over. Horse breaks its leg, gets shot. Horse dies, still gets flogged. Horse goes home for Christmas, is warned not to be controversial, spends the whole time throwing up everything it eats. Grandad turns up to Christmas dinner. Horse tells him, stay away. Family turns on the horse and the horse storms out. Horse's family stages intervention, tries to tell it Grandad's just old. He's from a different time. He's harmless, really. Horse stops eating. Horse lies on a bed of hay, fantasising about how flammable it is. Horse walks into a bar. Ouch. Thank you. I think I might have time to get through all of these, you know. This one's a bit shorter and I wrote it on the day that George Floyd was murdered. And whereas well, so I'm glad that Derek Chauvin's got 22 years and he should be getting 22 years for every single time George said, I can't breathe. So this is in memoriam for George Floyd. Through it all, there are my emotions. While I sing along to Marvin Gaye, voice cracking when I ask what's going on. Knowing my tears are a sterile thing, not a life restoring Alexa, if only they were. To say my heart is ripped in two is a cliche, yet I have not the words to say otherwise. My incoherence is an unfitting tribute to a man, a human being who died begging. Don't ask me why black lives matter when my brother can die with a knee on his neck and yet another takes a knee at a football game and he's a traitor to a whole way of life. Stop smearing us across pavements like we're just another level of tarmac for the rest of us to die on. Every time you kill a part of me too and there is less and less for Marvin to soothe. I hope to, that the God he sings about doesn't exist. I don't want him to forgive your sins, though God knows I try. Your white hood is an invisibility cloak these days, and I don't know when it will be my nephews, my brothers, my uncles that will be asking Marvin to heal me from. When one of us cries that he can't breathe, we all stop breathing. We feel that weight on our chests. Stop stealing the air from our lungs. Don't we deserve that at least? Okay, so I thought I would. I would break it up with something a little bit amusing. So, um, so <laughs> we, we're getting to some point of normality again, whatever the new normal is, and we are going to be going out and hooking up again. And this is fucking marvellous, but it's also full of peril. So this, this poem is all the things that I have learned from my wild days, which especially have had a wild and wasted youth, the youth and to have wasted it completely. Um, so the, this is the benefit of my wisdom. It's called Things to Know Before You Go Home with That Boy in the Club. First thing to know is that pillowcases are a must. I don't care if he's hung like a donkey, if leaving with me interrupted coitus, you deserve better than resting your head on his dried up drool. Second rule, always check the toilet roll sitch before you commit to getting buck naked. No, I don't care 
If his kiss makes you tremble after sex, you should always pee to avoid UTIs and shaking your lettuce is not the best bet for sexy goodbyes or your taxi ride home. If you have to make do with the tissues in your bag, believe me, one hun, he's not the one. Next, no, 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 neggy men. All ones who say, all girls be like. If he has a cap, but the litter tray is stanking, he does not get to add you to his pile of pussy. The sex may be good, like, really good, like, earth moving, good. But don't confuse a one night stand with a soulmate and don't confuse a soulmate with a life lesson and do not confuse a man without pillowcases with one who understands the concept of emotional labour, no matter how weak your knees get, because not being funny, we can come at home. All we really need is some batteries. The Thundercock 2000 loves us as we are. And we don't have to launder its skiddy pants. And if the man invites you in for a coffee, he best be damn sure he's at least got some milk. I don't care if he look like Tom Hardy in the club. If he takes off the lid and has to sniff it, you don't let that stankiness anywhere near. Make sure you remember, repeat after me. Consent is not sexy, it's mandatory. Edging may be edging. He may grin at your rimming, enjoy pegging without legging it. That gold cock might be gold-plated, hefty, weighted, e long, gated. But if you won't wear a condom, and no sex is that good that you let him off that one. If he asks, do you like that? He'll know if you like that. If he refers to his penis as hammer creator, bear with me on this one. Run, just run. Other than that, go wild, have fun. He's just Mr. Right now. Doesn't have to be the one. Thank you. I have got four minutes left. So it would seem that I do not have time for both the poems I was going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new one and I'm going to try something different. Um, audience participation where I can't hear the audience. I haven't been able to go on a pride march last year or the year before because I was too ill and there are marches but it's not quite the same at the moment and there is something about marching down a road and shouting that you're here and you're queer and you're loud and proud. So what I would want to do is have a pride march in this event where we all say loud, proud, here queer after every cent every line okay and there is a content warning for this as well um this i wrote while thinking about the pulse massacre and yeah it it's got a content warning for for massacring queer people basically so after i finish the line i want you all to say it with me even if i can't hear it especially if i can't hear it loud proud here, queer. All right, so this is pulse. There is a pulse, a beat inside of me, loud, proud, here, queer, bursting through for all to see, loud, loud. proud, here, queer, no matter the lives they try to steal, loud, proud, here, queer, together we will always heal, loud, loud proud, proud, here. Queer. Queer. A man intends to gun us down. Loud. Oh, proud. proud. Here. Here. Queer. 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 Finds the busiest club in town. Loud. Loud. Proud. proud. Here. Here. Queer. Queer. Shoots his shot from what I hear. Loud. Loud. Proud. proud. Here. Here. Queer. 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 Makes his decision, then drinks a beer. Loud. Oh. Loud. Proud. Loud. Here. Queer. 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 This fucker hit us where we live. We're loud, proud, proud. Here. here, queer. queer. But the beat, the pulse goes on. Loud, wow. proud, proud. Here. here, queer. queer. We learn to survive. We continue to thrive. Loud, loud. loud. proud, proud. Here. here, queer. queer. We learn, we grow, we stay alive. Loud, loud. loud. proud, proud. Here. Here. here, queer. Here. So fuck you asking about straight pride. Loud, loud proud, 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 pro
loud, loud proud, proud, proud here, here, queer. queer. Here. No, not died, been murdered, killed, loud, loud proud, 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 proud here, 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 here queer. 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 Just for existing, better still, ask me when you're covered in blood for holding hands with the one you love. Loud, loud, loud proud, 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 here, here, here queer. 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 There's a beat, a pulse that flows through me that tries to not live bitterly, that tries real hard to live in peace while you complain that pride isn't family friendly. Loud. Oh, loud. 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 Here. Here. Queer. Here. Pride is as friendly as can be. Loud. Loud. Proud. Proud. Here. 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 Queer. Here. For those who are truly family. Loud. loud. Proud. Proud. Here. 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 Queer. Queer. Here. So shove your fucking microaggression before I treat you to a lesson of Martha P. Johnson, of the Admiral Duncan, of countless who have lost their lives through murders, beatings, suicides. Fly your flag, wave it high. Loud, proud, 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 queer, queer. 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 Be gay, do crime. Loud, proud, proud, queer, queer. 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 They'll come for us. It's worth the price to live a real, authentic life. But there's a beat, a pulse flowing through us here. Loud. 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 Proud. Proud. Here. Queer. Queer. And that's my time exactly. Woo! 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 Let's go, D! Yeah! Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, yes. absolutely fantastic. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. Right away. Um, one of my favourite parts of that was how softly you said the phrase "Thundercock 2000." Um, oh yes, absolute stitches. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Um, D has a book coming out this summer, by the way, with a very cool indie press. Like, keep an eye out for that. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, that's the end of our show the end the sad bit um but the good news is there's loads more that goes on um poets do poet things all the time you can follow everyone on this lineup because they're all fantastic and they should all be your new favorite poet um i'm on the internet crows on the internet as anxious anarchist poetry um yeah everyone please do drop your instagrams facebook's pages videos anything in the uh the comments it helps engagement for a start and pushes us to more people and the more people to see this hopefully the more people donate to the uh the places that we're trying to get donations to that's the whole point of them um absolutely fantastic crow do you have any parting words as well oh just that was yet again another fantastic sad poet stars Duck club i am eternally grateful that i get to put all of you wonderful people on and let you do your thing and oh you grace the virtual stage each and every time and it's just been an actual absolute blast i've not heard most of you perform live before and what an absolute treat it's been to just absorb you all you're you're, you've all been absorbed now (laughs) um yeah, non-binary trans performers, doesn't have to be poets, just any one of the performing variety, check out the UK Trans and Non-Binary Poets Network on Facebook, check out Whiskey and Beards Publishing on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, check out all of these lovely poets, please all of you comment on the live stream comments with all of your socials everywhere, all your books, all your stuff, and keep your eyes peeled for the biggest Sad Poets Dust Up Club yet. Should be early September. It's going to be SPDC Margate Bookie Edition as I am coming to the festival. It's going to be fucking massive. Um, we've got some massive surprises lined up. So, yeah, you, if any if any of you around the Margate area are going to be there uh, late September for the live weekend, I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm running uh, a game show as well as doing sad poets so you'll see I'll me be there too. Connor will be there too come, come, come see connor as well it'll be great uh the um bucky slam is happening as well yeah you want to plug that for a sec uh close to the event i will i like to build oh, it slowly not a problem 
put you on the spot there, sorry. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody for coming to yet another Sad Poets Dust Up Club. We're all here, we're all queer, and we'll see you soon. Bye everyone. <laughs>